no fails, just kind of bringing it back to like, hey man, what were you taught when you learned how to ride a bike? Having a flyer go off somewhere else is almost as serious as a pistol shot going off somewhere else. I think because I mean the original weapon lights that were issued were like what, 60 lumens or something like yep. that? Yeah. Hey everyone, Matt Lanfer here with Primer and Secondary. Welcome to Modcast. It is episode 207. We're going to be talking to John Dufresne. We're going to be talking, to, talking about the pistol and the carbine mechanics course we all took this past weekend. This is one of those AAR classes or AAR podcasts. It's nice to talk about what we've done and how we can improve and all that kind of stuff. Uh, more importantly, though, it's important that we're able to discuss this stuff to get the word out that training is, well, it's something that a lot of people kind of uh, don't pay much attention to. They read about it. They think, wow, that sounds really cool, but I, I can never do that. I can never afford it. I can't schedule it, but you can. It just takes some planning. It takes a little bit of, uh, a little bit of savings, a little bit of, uh, oh, maybe even a little maturity. Yeah. So today's September 10th, 2019. Um, the weather that, uh, on, those, uh, on those fine training days were nice and warm. They were windy, a little bit of rain. It was awesome. It was sunny. Um, yeah, we're, approach we're quickly approaching uh, the colder season. where, uh, And it's also getting darker, as we were discussing just a minute ago. It's time to start breaking out night vision. If you happen to have night vision, John happens to teach that too. Funny how that works. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, big thanks to our sponsors. Um, let's start out with Filster Holsters. If you are looking for a near universal ambidextrous holster that is compatible with an X300U, or there's also a model that is compatible with a TLR1 HL, check out Filster's Floodlight. Basically, what it is, it is a appendix holster that works with pretty much everything. I don't think I own a pistol that it does not. It is not compatible with when I throw a weapon light on it. It's a great holster, which unlike the spotlight, unfortunately, the floodlight, if you're watching, you can see the floodlight in my hand. Floodlight, you can uh, swap out the clips for the DCC clips, uh, the discrete carry clips, or disc discrete carry concept clips, which are fantastic. Um, otherwise, I usually run the just the, the loops, but uh, awesome holster. If you have a, a wide variety of firearms and you don't want to buy a bunch of holsters for each and every one of them, this is a good solution for you. Also, big thank you to Facts on Firearms. The thing that I've been mentioning recently is most everyone that's listening to this, yeah, there's a good possibility you're a gun person. There's a good possibility you like to take things apart, put them back together, fix them, maintain them. In doing so, there are parts that you may need to replace. Facts on Firearms has all kinds of AR-15 parts. They also have all kinds of AR-15 uh, barrels, pistol barrels, you name it. I believe they also had AK barrels at one time. They may still. Um, but it's important to kind of like what, we were t what I was just talking about with training, preparing, looking into the future, figuring out what your needs are. You can do this also with your AR-15. You can look at, find out what, you can look at your AR-15, figure out what parts are going to be needed to be swapped out. If you need new recoil springs or you name it, or detents, which wind up going into your, into your, carpet. You can go to Faxon and get all this stuff. Um, also, big thank you to Walther Firearms. This episode is brought to you by the letters P, P, and Q. Out of the box, if you're looking for a concealed weapon about the same size as a Glock 19, I'm liking the Walther PPQ far better. Uh, same capacity, the grip, however, is slightly larger, which for me is kind of nice. I'm a big fan of having pinky support in the 19. My pinky just kind of falls off. Additionally, with a Walther PPQ, I find that this has the best, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, the best factory trigger. It is a nice, crisp, light, effective trigger. And the gun shoots wonderfully. If you happen to know me, I'll be happy to take you out shooting. If you, if you haven't messed with Walther's or the PPQ at all, I highly recommend that you go to a gun store, do some dry fire, check it out, manipulate it a little. If you have a range nearby that has these available for rental, check it out. I think I can pretty much guarantee you'll be impressed. I'm really surprised at the price point they're at. Also, they are considerably more, they're more, let's see here. There's more value added. No, they're less expensive. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but for, for a great firearm, 
Lastly, big thank you to our Patreon subscribers. If you go to patreon.com slash primary and secondary, you can help support the network. Basically what that means is, let's see here. We have all these, all these various things that are happening. We have these, the podcasts, we have hosting, we have projects and all that, all that good stuff. Essentially what, what our Patreon subscribers are helping us do is pay for a lot of really cool content. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this because it gets very expensive very quickly. As a matter of fact, the live episode of this, as we speak right now, while it is live, Patreon subscribers, network support members specifically and greater have access to this. Patreon support starts at a dollar per month and you can go up to sky's the limit. There are all kinds of benefits that go along with that. If you go to $5 monthly, there are all kinds of discounts and other, other good stuff. So I think I'm going to stop talking about that. My background's in law enforcement. I've been through a ton of training. I think I did a, let's see here. I did a, an assessment and I, I, pretty sure I broke about a thousand hours, at least a thousand hours of firearms training. Everything from multiple EAG classes with uh, Pat Rogers, Pat Mack, uh, lots of Darcy. Let's see here. What else? Uh, Bill Blowers. Man, I, I have too many classes. And I just attended this class with John Dufresne. And I got to say, this was awesome. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I'm not saying that because John's a friend. I'm saying this genuinely. This was one of those classes where I walked away from it thinking, I need my friends to go to this. I need my coworkers to go to this. I also found that this class was not only great for someone who's kind of been there and done that. It helps refine your performance. It provides a lot of very unique perspectives that I never had before. Uh, as a matter of fact, it helped me refine some of the training, some of the training scars I had kind of help help me work through some of them a little bit. But most importantly, if you have any friends or family that are that are looking to get into guns, this is a great place to start. Uh, pistol mechanics, carbine, great stuff. It is a great place to it's a it, it's a great place to start your, your training foundation. So I'm going to stop talking. Now I'm going to have people do their intros. I think I'm going to start with Jordan because he's at the bottom of my screen. <laughs> uh, I'm Jordan Hopkins, um, two year sheriff's deputy, uh, started in corrections, been working patrol for about four months now. Um, this was my first rifle class and it was freaking awesome. Um, previously I trained with Blowers and, a no name school in Las Vegas that it's not worth mentioning. So that's me. And uh, Jordan and I, we, uh, we kind of live close. We live, we work in the same County. And so it's nice to see, let's see here. There were three of us from the same area that all attended this class. And that is such a nice change. It's always been me by myself and then a bunch of other people and no one from my area. And to see law enforcement from this immediate vicinity, it was so refreshing. And I want to be able to help change that. I want to help influence others from neighboring agencies to come out and train with us. Because it's, I, think it's we're, I think we're getting great. there. It's yeah. coming around. Yeah. So let's see here. Let's pick on Mike now. Uh, Mike Plans, former active duty Navy, uh, almost eight years, been out for 10 years. I've had some some previous training, but it's been it's been a while. I live in Southern Idaho now, and it's not the availability is just not there. I was able to meet up with Josh and, and what he's doing for the Rob Hot Shotgun Course, and uh, great group of guys down there. Josh does a super job. So uh, when I got the chance to train with John, I jumped on it, and uh, I've trained with uh, Greg Hamilton, Insights Training, Marty Hayes, Firearms Academy of Seattle. Um, Trained with Shaw Shooting, which is Houston Shaw, John Shaw's son. Runs an operation up here, but it's almost exclusively uh, military contracts now. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's it. I have a lot to learn. And then also, and your profession is completely polar opposite. Absolutely. I work in management in the dairy industry. I don't work in a dairy. I work in, say, 150 dairies. So, um, we build and maintain service all the dairies in this area, which this is Southern Idaho's heavy, heavy agriculture. So, um, yeah, my, my profession has nothing to do with, with combat arms. It's just my love. It has been since I was a kid. 
John's laughing because he's like, yeah, it shows, brother. <laughs> oh, it, it does. Rock on. I mean, milk got to be protected, too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, even in, in Rob's class, in the shotgun class, yeah, he, uh, you've obviously been shooting and you're, you're not one of those people that he, you're, you're a competitor when, when it comes to those final drills. Oh, yeah, you're one of those guys that we need to watch out for. That's what we like to hear. Just going to get better. Yeah. And I guess we can talk to Josh. <laughs> hey guys, uh, Josh Thornton. Um, I guess you could say I'm a regular guy, although I'm not sure any of my friends would call me regular. Um, but uh, not law enforcement, not military, anything like that. Just kind of a Joe Schmo living the dad life. Got three kids. Um, shootings like my uh, my second passion, right behind scuba diving, and I work in scuba diving, so. I end up doing shooting for fun a lot of times. Um, you know, just get something different than work. And uh, I'm really passionate because I, I teach as part of my living. I'm, I'm really passionate about learning and improving and uh, trying to become the best that I can be. Um, and so that's kind of what led me to start setting up some of these classes and seek out instructors and training that I want to do. Everyone kind of thinks I'm doing it for like the good of the industry and the group or anything. Really, it's just selfish. I, you know, I, I want to bring in the classes that I want to do and I get people to fill the classes to do it. So no, it's, I, it's, it's really fun doing it with a group of guys from around here too and seeing their passion and desire to learn as well. So yeah, that's, that's basically me. Yep. Josh was the host for this and also the hot class uh, back at the end of June and uh, a, a bunch more classes on the horizon. The nice thing about this also is Utah is an absolute black hole for training. And Josh, fortunately, has been able to bring some really good instruction and has some really good instruction on the horizon coming out. And it's, that's greatly appreciated. I hosted uh, Pat Rogers and, and, and a couple others years ago, and it was depressing. No one was interested to, to train and numbers continued to dwindle. And uh, there's, there's hope now. It's nice. Yeah, we're excited. We got some good stuff on the horizon. And uh, so far, I mean, the interest and the, the passion shown from everyone has, has been right up there with mine. So hopefully we can keep that going. Next, you could probably get people to go out scuba diving. Oh, wait, you're, that's <laughs> already your profession. Yeah. In the middle of the desert. What a strange concept. We do it, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly... We have John. Bonjour now. Uh, so my name is John Dufresne. Um, I'm the owner of Kinetic Consulting. Uh, I also teach for Sage Dynamics and occasionally for Frank Proctor shooting now, uh, which used to be way of the gun. Um, I'm a former Army Ranger. Uh, I also worked as an EMT for a little bit too. Um, after that, ended up in the security industry uh, working for like essentially bodyguard work, which was horrendous um don't do that um <laughs> and if you do man you, good luck um and then uh, throughout that entire time i got into consulting for uh law enforcement and federal agencies help them become uh better shooters better tacticians and using my experience to kind of mold and uh and hopefully help them and uh and that just blossomed into more and more stuff and uh it's it's so gotten to me or at this point. So after college, I literally took this full, full fledged and, uh, and started did it, doing this full time, which has been fantastic. And, uh, and it continues to grow and I hope it continues even further. So pretty awesome. So you said you, you continue to work with, with Aaron, you work on occasion with Frank mm -hmm. and did you, now did I hear correctly that you started with Frank yeah, so I started out with Frank, um, I think it was like 2011 time, I, I started with him, and it was mainly as an AI, like I would just go help him out in his classes, and uh, and it was because I was, I was stationed in Benning, so I could just drive right over to Alabama, and uh, it, was, it wasn't too bad, and then, uh, and then from then on, it was just helping him out, doing some certain classes and stuff like that, and then uh, went into the security industry all the way out in L.A., and lived there for a little bit. And, and then, uh, that's when I moved back home and got into college. And that's when I met Aaron too. And, uh, and then he, I guess, noticed that I was a useful human and, uh, 
and I don't know if you've been to one of Aaron's classes, but he, you know, we, at the Sage Dynamics, we, we uh, give out a red and a black patch. And the red patches are for the students that, that show uh, really good, successful use of all the techniques used. And then uh, the black patch is for the top shooter, right? He's the one that, that show, came, with, came with the stuff, showed the stuff, and it, and it really it came out to be an awesome. And, uh, and after four black patches, Aaron decided he's like, he's like, I can't give any more to him. I'm going to go ahead and hire him. Now <laughs> that's the joke that he, he says about it, but, but most of all, it's like, it was, it was a cool opportunity and, uh, and continues to be being part of the Sage family. Uh, Aaron's awesome. And if you've never trained with him, then you're, you're missing out. He's a fantastic intellectual. And, and if you haven't read his white paper on red dots, uh, I don't know where you've been. Um, but it is, it is a fantastic, he's a fantastic dude. And I'm sure most of the people that have been on, on primary and secondary kind of know him. Oh yeah. So what would you say have been the biggest learning moments or the biggest things that you've learned from those two? Uh, so, so from Frank, it was, I was, I was super fresh, right? So I was, I was a green brand new, uh, army ranger. I had, uh, I think one deployment under my belt by the time I met Frank. And I was like, you know what? Because I, I really wanted to learn more. I, I was hungry, and uh, and I wasn't getting enough from the in the inside or internal training that we were getting. And so it was like, okay, let me go check it out. And he opened up my eyes to to what competition shooting's about, and how to be the the most efficient shooter, or at least begin to be a more efficient shooter, and things like that. And and really just using using your head and logically thinking through certain things that you're going to do. And, uh, obviously introduced me to, to competing and I love to compete. I think it's, it's such an enhancement on your, on your shooting abilities. And, uh, and I think it's, I, we, we did a podcast on that and I think it was like, uh, I forget the name of it, but it was something competition shooters and, uh, and Panone, I think on there said it the best. He's like, he's like, don't look at it as like a competition, or, or like, you know, it's a game or whatever, but look at it at like, as a skill builder, like you're looking at this, this big stage as you're doing a bunch of drills, but under time with somebody watching stuff like that. And, and that's something Frank introduced me to, which, which also introduces yourself to like emotional control and, and being able to like really, really find out who you are to an extent. And that was one of the biggest things I noticed uh, with that. And, and that was the biggest takeaway I got from Frank for the most part. But I continue to go take classes with him at least once a year. If I'm not, um, you know, if I'm not teaching with him, I'm probably going to go up there and, and take a class. I do his four-day classes that he has. And uh, and if you haven't trained with him, you're, you're missing out once again. Now, with Aaron, it's, it, was, it, it was kind of an eye-opener to the sciences that go behind all the shooting and all your – your abilities that you can do or have as a shooter. And that was one of those things that, that really opened it for me. And, and wow. So I can use science to prove my point. And, and as you guys saw this past weekend, like I, I got very little wise, right? Like, Oh, why do we do this? Oh, why do we do that? There's very little. <laughs> and it was because I, I tried to answer them prior to getting any kind of question and using scientific science data facts and, uh, and letting you try it. So that's, that's something I got from Aaron is, is being able to use the science to, to prove my point. And that works the best, especially when, when, uh, when doing like law enforcement courses and, and teaching those guys, uh, federal agencies, right. Whenever I'm teaching special agents or something like that, they, <laughs> the, those two groups of like that law enforcement side have a lot of stubborn habits and when you can prove it to them with science, it takes them away from that. They're like, okay, well, the scientists said so, so okay. <laughs> like, and they, they agree with me more than just, hey, do this because I said so. And that's how they've been taught most of the time. And it's, it's just sad. That's how I was taught in the Army. And it, it, it really did get to me at times. But, yeah, using some science. So I, uh, I think that was one of the, the greatest things I got from Aaron personally. Um, and that's, that's just one of, I'm sure plenty that I can't think of right now. That was definitely one of the things I, I really appreciated with both classes was that you 
present a concept and then you would tell everyone, okay, go back to the line, do one mag of this and see what you think. Yeah. Discovery mode, I call it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people might talk about it and then they'll think, oh yeah, I'll try that. Well, here in this class, you are going to try about it. Yeah. Try it. It's not just talking. It's yeah, you're going to have, you're going to see the results for yourself. That's a nice change. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I, I liked how you also had us, I mean, purposely, you know, try it. Here's what I feel is my, you know, my favorite way of doing it, but do it this way, do it the wrong way, feel the difference, you know, try it this third way, see what you think. Um, but that was really valuable for me to, to experience that, hey, this is wrong, right? And then <laughs> here's two better ways to do it. See how they feel different. Now, which one do you like? Okay, now get some reps in on that and kind of, yeah. you know do it that way from now on. <laughs> I love options, love options. So. Well, that also applies to the culmination exercise at the end of each class as well. You have everyone go through the drill and then, you, and you do it. And then we stop and then we analyze that and figure out, okay, how could we do this better? And then we try it again and everyone's scores somehow magically improve. Except mine. Except for Jordan who comes <laughs> missing. And mine. <laughs> <laughs> by, by all fault of your own. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's totally because I want a Ricky Bobby. It, that's totally Less why. caffeine. You right. You went all Ricky Bobby on it for sure. <laughs> we finished that second run on the on the first day with handguns, and John said, that was a nice emotional run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all my encouragement I try to give all my students too. <laughs> well, I think Josh and I were the only ones that, uh, I don't know, we probably had the fewest amount of misses. Yeah, I think you guys ran pretty clean. Yeah, so Matt's trying to point that out without bragging too much right here. But, yeah, it's a, I, was, I was pretty happy with my performance. I mean, you know, although it was a competition against everyone in there, really I was competing against myself. Yes. And, uh, I was talking to Matt ahead of time, and I said, you know, for, for my use and my fun, like, misses were not acceptable. I'd rather go slower and not get misses. Um, and I was able to do that the first day. The second day, I wasn't quite able to do that. I got a little excited. Yeah, but that was just the, the second run. <laughs> the first run, you were clean. Yeah, I should have just stopped. While I was at head. <laughs> we played around with it afterwards too on the second day, a little longer, so I got a few yeah. more reps. Yeah. So, John, if you were to say you had a specific focus of your, not necessarily of your class, but you as a teacher, what would you say it would be? Uh, so, so I try to focus on, uh, on being more consistent, right? Uh, the, the consistency of, of what I'm trying to do, whatever I'm trying to accomplish, uh, whether it's, um, you know, reloads or B8s at 25 or whatever it is, I try to be more consistent because if I can be more consistent, then I can be more efficient. And if I can be more efficient, it translates to me being able to do things either sooner or faster. And if I can get that done, then guess what? Like, I win. Right. So, so I beat myself or I beat yesterday me. Um, and that's the goal. That's the goal is to always be better than yesterday's me. And, uh, and if I can, then rock on, if I can't, then what did I do or what didn't I do to accomplish that? And, and once I figure it out, I go ahead and work on that. And, uh, and I think that's, that's one of those things that, that a lot of shooters don't do. Uh, they don't, they don't compete against themselves enough. Um, especially, especially because they, you know, they use a shot timer to just, Hey, how fast is my draw? Like, and they, they use that minuscule thing or task to, to rate their, their level of shooter. And instead of going ahead and, and really putting yourself to the test with multiple tasks in one looking setting. at the system. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's definitely like a, it's a hard thing to do if you've never done it. But uh, I'll tell you, like, it, you don't even have to go to just my class to learn um, uh, how to kind of start discovering that. But uh, any, any USPSA match or IDPA match or two-gun, three-gun, you'll start to realize things and, and observe other things like, hey, wow, that guy did this thing really quick or really smooth. How did that happen? And, and like, uh, I'm one of those people – I'll people watch – wherever I go, right? I, I, I judge humans, right? <laughs> and and I, I look at how they're doing certain things and I'm like, wow, that's that's kind of stupid. Or wow, that is that is not a th that like that's something that never went through my head. 
maybe that'll work, right? And uh, there was even something I did in college um, during lectures. I would I would always think like while they were talking like okay, how can I apply that to shooting or my business or something else and and really play around with it you know cr critical thinking type stuff so it was it's cool it's cool to be able to do that but also it's it's a learned task so you have to kind of learn how to do that or have have the want to one thing that i was incredibly surprised with and this was you and i were we were driving somewhere probably chick-fil-a or something um absolutely surprised that this is kind of a newer endeavor for you because the overall class seems to be very not seem it is very refined you have you have um obviously there are set tasks you have set terminology you also have reasonable understandable logical sciency answers for anything that possibly might come up and even for some of those things that never even did come up, you already answered it as you, as you pointed out before, how did you get to that point? At what point were you an assistant and you decided, you know what, I found my voice. This is where I want to go with it. Well, it all, all comes from like a, uh, like practice and experience, right? So, so once I gain experience on something, right? Like, uh, let's say just a tourniquet, right? Using a tourniquet. Once I gain and understand how to use it, I've applied it to humans. I've applied it to myself. I've carried one, right? And then, and then done it live even. So once I've gained all those experiences, you find out what works, what doesn't work, how to explain how to make it work, and what are some of the do's and don'ts. And once I can do all that, or I have all that content, you can say, then you can trim out what's necessary, what's kind of like, hey guys, watch out for this thing, watch out for that thing, and and maybe you wanna you, you wanna do this with the tourniquet or prepare the tourniquet prior. Yeah, you know, lots of little things that'll go along with it that you would never know if you were teaching based off of theory. Right? Like, oh well, somebody showed me a tourniquet one day and now I'm gonna teach you how to use it. Like it it, it has to come with some experience in there. Um and and making mistakes like first tourniquet I ever put on somebody, right? I put it high and tight on their leg and I forgot about a VS 17 panel, which is like a big orange and pink sided like panel that we use for signaling right in the army and uh, forgot about it in its pocket, right? In its front pocket. And I was cranking on this thing and I'm like, what the heck's wrong with him? Right. And I get all the way to the point where I can't tighten it any further and he's still bleeding. Right. So I, I start like trying to figure out what the heck I did wrong and all this stuff. And then I realized I never emptied his pocket. Right. The simplest of things. But now in my stop the bleed classes, I bring up that story. I explain to them why I explain to them how to do it. Right. Get your hand in there, scoop it all out, whatever. Right. We all know how to get stuff out of pockets and then make sure you crank that tourniquet on right? and, and do it properly. So, with that experience, I can now explain, right? Like, hey, I made a boo-boo once that almost cost a life, and then I corrected myself, right? And hopefully, if you make that boo-boo, you'll be like, ah, John said that that one time. It's in my Rolodex of understanding, so let me, let me go ahead and uh, fix that. So things just as simple as that. Uh, but instructors don't make, make mistakes, mistakes, right? That's, that's <laughs> a big, a big factor you know. <laughs> now, we definitely make mistakes and, and I think it's 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 something I think I talked to Josh about while we were there um, I like I like every once in a while where I make a, a mistake because then I can talk about it and I think I did a couple a couple times with some of the demos or something right I made a boo-boo or made it I, I did something a little faster and then we stopped and we talked about it and I, I think that's so important um, personally like that's how I learn right? I self-diagnose, I figure out what I did wrong so that I can better myself for next time. And, uh, and at least, you know, I can, I can see more, uh, which, which is always good for, for the shooting side, <laughs> but make myself a better shooter overall. And, uh, and that's one of those things like, uh, some guys won't, won't own up to mistakes. They won't show you their mistakes. Uh, we see it on social media all the time, right? Like, <laughs> wow, that was really fast. And then next clip, no, no target, no, no target. <laughs> like, was there one? Right, so, 
so things like that. Uh, I think it's, I think it's important, right? Uh, I think I've talked about it plenty of times and I even posted a video of me shooting a plate rack, uh, one handed through my camera or through my phone and, uh, and, and asked, asked the internet, like, Hey, what happened on that fifth shot? Why did I miss that fifth shot? Right. On the plate rack. And like all these guys like throwing out, like some of them were like joking and they're like, Oh, because the plate rack was like invincible or something like that. But some people were like, Oh, because the dot was like way low left and you probably cranked on that trigger. And I'm like, yeah, like, there you go. You're starting to, you're starting to get it right. Just from visually seeing it. So those are the things that you want to see in, in your own shooting as you're doing it. So you can correct those things. And, uh, and I think it's important to show that. So that's one of those, one of those aspects to this job that I think a lot of people don't, don't look at all that much or they judge it incorrectly instead of using it as a teaching moment. You know, that was one of the things that really surprised me when I was talking to you about your, your packing list and how much ammo you wound up bringing and that you brought, basically you, you brought what the, what the students were bringing. Yeah. So wait a minute. St- instructors don't shoot. What the heck? And you're like, <laughs> Oh no, I'm shooting. Like, yeah, that's not, that's a, that's a nice change. Bill yeah. absolutely shot with this. Rob shot with this. Um, but some instructors, they just choose not to. Uh, I know there's some that, that uh, can't let their ego be destroyed by others. Um, I know there's some that just, uh, they don't, they don't fucking practice. <laughs> they don't, they don't do anything to make themselves better. So they essentially kind of make themselves worse by not doing any of it. And then, those will probably be the same ones that don't demo up into a few of those classes as well. And, uh, it's, it's kind of sad, but you know what, like, that's not my class. Uh, I'm going to do what, what they're kind of asking, but I definitely know better. And, uh, as a student, you should know better, you know, going to a class, vetting your instructor, making sure you're going to somebody that is going to give you what you need, you know, not, not what you want, what you need. And, uh, and I think that's another important aspect to, to teaching is like seeing what each student needs out of the class. Like, like Jordan, I knew he was pretty quick on the trigger and I knew what he was doing is, was pretty spot on. Right. So, so what he needed was actually just controlling the cougar, right? Like, like backing off a little bit and being more patient. And and like, I think we talked about that, right, Jordan? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Um, I think it was after we did the final rifle uh, drill. Yeah or uh, the little course stage. of fire, yeah, stage, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. that was one thing that I thought was huge, man. You you brought that laser out, and you're like, look, this is what my rifle does during recoil. I'm like, oh, yes. hey, my rifle does that, but I'm not seeing the dot when it does that, so I got I to gotta slow down and take my time, and I can still get fast hits, just be more patient, less yeah. emotional. Just a little bit more patient. It's definitely, it's definitely something that I know uh, you'll learn. You'll learn doing more USPSA. And, yeah. And, it, the more you do it, you're like, man, I was reckless when I was younger. <laughs> I should have driving that fast. <laughs> and the cadence thing too was a big part of that, you know, learning how to get consistent hits and transitioning between targets and making the transition the same as a split. You might have to pull your splits down, but you'll shoot it a lot smoother. And that was huge for me too. Yeah. Yeah. Literally breaking that down by the numbers. Yeah. That was an awesome yeah. visual. Good. Good. I'm glad that helped. I think that was, uh, I've never seen it that way. I've never seen somebody explain it that way, show it that way, nothing. So, um, and, and we could have done it where I put you guys on the timer too. got two random students like, Hey, do this cadence wise and do this with double taps and let's see what it looks like. And, uh, and you can see the difference. It's really cool on the timer. Uh, but just drawing it and giving you some random numbers, usually like some that'll, uh, explain what I'm trying to explain or show you what I'm trying to explain actually help a lot. When was the last time you took a class? Uh, last month. Was and last month? You, I got to look. I'm pretty sure it was last month. I haven't taken one this one yet. Off the top of your head, do you re- recall what the biggest epiphany from that class was? Let's see. Uh, I don't think I got an epiphany from that last class, but I definitely got a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of teacher stuff out of that class. Right. So a couple, a couple ways to speak to students differently, 
um, which is very minor, but for, for an instructor, I think that's important if you go to a class. Um, but I was actually in that class with another instructor as well, like as a student. So we were both students in, it was in Jared's class, Reston's. So uh, it was really cool and it was me and Varg. So to have both of us in one class as students, uh, Jared was like explaining like it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of nerve wracking. Like you guys are like looking at me <laughs> and we're judging you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so make your jokes good. Uh, but, but no, like, like, uh, it was a nice little precision pistol course and I loved it. I thought it was awesome, but the, the, the way that he kind of explained, uh, prepping trigger stuff and things like that. I liked, I liked how he explained it. It's a little different from the way I did. And, uh, and I'm still learning more and more about that anyways. That's a, a way that he's been shooting for years and, uh, his team shoots that way too. So then, uh, the JSO side, uh, their SWAT team actually works on that, which is cool, but it's, it's definitely, uh, there's some practice, right? There's a, a learning curve to it, but I, I mean, that's one of those cool things that, that you get from classes in, in general, uh, even as an instructor, like just little, little things, little things every time. It's like working out really like, uh, you go to the gym when you're, when you're scrawny and you have no muscle, right? Everything you do is going to give you muscle, right? And then, as long as you do it with like form uh, or else you're going to get hurt. Uh, but then you go ahead and you, you've been working out for years and you're like, well, unless I make some real crazy changes, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to either plateau or start going at like a small incremental rise in my abilities or my strength or something. So it's, it's similar to that until you take something that's way out of your league, right? Like, like for me, uh, precision shooting, right? Doing, doing more DMR or SPR type shooting now this year, it took me way out of my comfort zone because that's not my thing. Like I, I don't shoot the 500 normally or six or seven or whatever, but taking a class doing that with like Don Edwards from Greenline, uh, it was, it was cool as hell. Loved it. It made me build a specific rifle to it. And, and now I have like, I don't know, a few hundred rounds of like match ammo sitting there, like waiting to be shot and things like that. Like, it just changed my whole aspect to it. And I already talked to you. I think I want to take a Buck Doyle class when I come out next time. So definitely like it's cool to try something new that you're not good at personally. I find that to be fun and, and, and refreshing. So. And one thing I remember you talking about and obviously um, yeah, just being the constant student, and you mentioned the plateau part, you know, it's kind of sad talking to some people when they reach that plateau and they all of a sudden, it seems like it goes in, it goes in a couple different directions potentially. Hit the plateau and all of a sudden, I know everything. I am the yes. master. Or I hit the plateau and now nothing, there's really nothing of value anymore. I don't know what I can do. And then lastly, it's okay. Keep at it and help others achieve better and interesting, uh, interesting uh, mindsets people have with this kind of stuff. Yeah. So those Josh, that, those that close up, uh, kind of, they lose a little bit on the whole thing too. So yeah. So Josh, why would you want to host this guy? Why, how did he come up of all the potential <laughs> instructors? Why this weird guy? Uh, well, so that's a good question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to give him a chance, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, Matt and I were talking about this um, over the weekend. Um, so, I mean, here's the deal. There's hundreds, if not thousands of shooters out there that are better shooters than me, right? So, theoretically, I could go to any one of them and, and learn something. But um, as we discussed, is just because you're good at doing something does not mean you're good at teaching it. does not mean you're good at helping others improve, at providing that critical feedback and um, – doing it in a way that's compatible with the person you're trying to help as well. So I originally, um, I actually just this weekend was the first time I ever met John in person. Um, but I was introduced to him after I took a Sage Dynamics course, um, got added to the alumni group on Facebook, started seeing some of the John's posts and things. And I think shortly thereafter he became a Sage instructor. I started following him on Instagram, but basically kind of what attracted me to him was his, his personality. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. What was when I, I started stalking him and uh, <laughs> <laughs> my squat booty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it his personality and philosophy, and I started watching, you know, some of his videos that he's done on YouTube, even just some of the, the Insta live videos, Insta stories and stuff like that. His passion uh, for learning and improving uh, really aligned with mine. You know, the fact that he goes out and takes classes, that, I mean, just that alone, like, takes any instructor and moves them up in my book. You know, the fact that he's still learning and, and trying to apply those things. Um, because I also teach for a living, and I'm really passionate about that. That you know, I I haven't reached that pinnacle. I can continue to be better, and everything I learn can make me a better instructor for my students. And so I really like that about John. Um, I also like the fact that um, yeah, I've taken some other classes um, where due to their prior service and experience or anything that they're beating their chest. Um, you know, I, I took one class. I can't tell you how many times over the course of the weekend the instructor told me dozens and dozens of times about how if we got into a, a fight on the street, how he would win and I shouldn't feel bad about that. And I, that doesn't, that didn't rub me the right way. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was thinking like, okay, you have the experience. I don't, I, I'm never going to be kicking down doors in Afghanistan or wherever. I'm just a regular guy and I hear, and I want to learn from your experience. So why don't you teach me rather than tell me how, how much better you are or you know, things like that. And John doesn't do that. John does have that experience. Um, you know, and, um, but he presents it in a way that allows me to relate it to my life. Um, you know, I, I wasn't military. I never will be military. Um, but he can take his experience in the military and outside the military and help me learn things and then apply it to my life, which, you know, that's what matters to me. I'm just an everyday carry guy. Um, you know, and so I did like the pistol course. I did it from appendix, you know, inside the waistband because that's where I carry my gun. Um, you know, I, I have very few outside the waistband holsters just because I don't walk around with a gun on my hip. Um, so those, those are the kind of things that originally attracted me to John. And then, I not to mention, he was super easy to work with. I mean, once I decided to start doing this, you know, I basically I shot him an email. I'm like, hey, I've got this crazy idea. I want you to come out to Utah. I, I didn't even know what class I wanted to teach. I just basically said, I want you to come and do two days. He's like, yeah, no problem. And so we like set a date and I think we had it all set up within like a week or something like that going back and forth. And then he's kind of like, oh, wait, what do you want me to teach? <laughs> 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 and so we, we, we threw together this class and, we, and our idea was we did one day handgun, one day rifle, because um, we didn't really know what people wanted. You know, not a lot of people out here um, were super familiar with John or um, not a lot of people out here have, have done a lot of training either. So kind of my idea was, and I threw this out to John, I was like, hey, what if we do one day handgun, one day a rifle, that'll build us a base of you know, cool guys that are competent, and then we can come back and start doing like the really fun stuff, right? Like some of his more advanced stuff that we're talking about doing next year. Um, now we've got a group of guys that we're all, we all feel safe around each other, we've got a basic level of competency, and we can move on from there. So that, that was kind of the idea. It seemed to work. Yeah, I think so. And everyone seemed pretty happy. And, and we, so we had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. <laughs> that's not bad. I had a good time. Well, that's all that matters. <laughs> I, I mean, I had a good time shooting um, with and in front of you guys. So that's, that's always, it's always a bonus to me. So. so Mike, how did you come to the conclusion these were classes you were going to attend? I had done the same thing. I, I had seen John online. I mean, that's, that's really the extent of some of my training these days is to pick up new things and take them to the range and try them myself. Um, I think I had first become aware of John and Kinetic Consulting watching uh, some John Lavelle stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> he, he'd love that you said Lavelle, by the way. <laughs> how, is this, how is it? It's level. Level? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, man, you're correcting me to this day, and I'm so far away. That's all right. I'm teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to throw this in there about John's teaching style. Um, he definitely has the experience. There was minimal self-promotion, if any. But when the guy shoulders his rifle or draws his pistol, you can tell he loves to shoot. He is out there. I think when he does the drill, it's as much just to pull the trigger himself as it is to demo for the class. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that style of teaching makes me want to be better. It make, it's like a good team leader. You, know? you want to be better for that guy. He doesn't have to force you to be better. It's just natural. Hey, I'm going to follow that guy. What he's doing is working. It's, he's, he's a great instructor. 
Well, he would start singing. It was his turn to shoot, and he'd start singing. Absolutely. My game. I go first. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Game, I, first. <laughs> I actually get that from Frank, by the way. Uh, that's definitely, like, one of the things he would do. He's like, all right, uh, I set up the drill, so I get to go first. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely borrow that from Frank. But, yeah, I mean, what's, why not, right? Well, I think one of my favorite video clips from the class that I posted on my Insta stories was uh, when John was shooting a demo. You know, he, like, I think it went pretty well. And he's like, yeah, what's up, right? You know, like, <laughs> like he's having fun with it, you know? He's not up there like, <laughs> right, just do what I do. Oh, do better. You know, he's, he's making it fun. He, you can tell he's having fun himself, which adds to the fun for the students. And I think we can all agree that when you're enjoying something, um, you're going to have a better learning experience. I mean, you're going to retain the knowledge better. You're going to remember that as a good experience rather than a, than a bad experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when we finish up on Sunday afternoon and we've been on our feet for two days straight, you know, everybody's tired, and you dread the fact that it's over, that was a good class. And I don't think we've mentioned this once. This was a an accelerated class with the minimal breaks and – if we did have a break, they were shortened, unless yeah. there was a windstorm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got kind of forced into that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on writing up my AARs that I'll post and everything. And I, 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 my, my, probably my one regret is that we, you know, we couldn't do a two-day handgun class and then a two-day rifle class. I mean, we, we can. We can do it again in the future. Um, but it, it was awesome to have that. Um, and I think it worked out well. But, yeah, I'd say – and we, we definitely could have got easily two days out of each and had just as much fun, learned even more, and, and got a lot more out of it. Yeah, that's normally how it is, too. They're both, those are both, like, two-day classes. So, you know, I had to kind of skimp some stuff off, like some of the not-as-important things and, like, you know, see where everybody was, was at. Like, hey, how competent is everyone? Like, everybody's draw was pretty decent, so I didn't have to talk about that all that much, right? Uh, maybe individually with some guys, but like things like that, like I can, I can definitely trim off some of the fat and, and manage my time a little bit better. And that's what I was working on doing uh, through those two classes. And it's, it's hard. It's hard with like 15 students on the line. And you're like, mm-hmm. all right, he's pretty good with this. He's all right with that. He's all right with this. He's good with that. Let me, let me work with that, with that dude and, and go around and, and really essentially categorize you guys in different ways to, to make it easier for me to, to teach certain aspects. So, and, and then that and manage time and give you guys enough breaks to, to drink water and, and, uh, and load mags and then immediately rush you back to the line because I want to shoot. So <laughs> I got, I got more shooting to do. I brought a bunch of ammo. So, uh, so definitely, definitely fun, but yeah, that's, it's definitely a two day class. Well, I think both classes, as they were presented, really complemented each other. Uh, the The carbine concepts were refined because we got to try it out with pistols. And then yes. we also got to see how much easier it was with carbines. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Especially like the cadence stuff, the, the transitions, stuff like that. Like with the rifle, you're, you're living in, in the, the awesome land. With a handgun, you got to work. You got to work. And, uh, and not to say you don't have to with an, a rifle or an AR, but, um, but it's less, a little bit less that you have to really put into it to get what you want, uh, especially at those distances. We took it back, you know, four or 500 yards and yeah, you got to put in a lot, but, but right there, I think it's, it's easy peasy. It's, it's like, it's, you're really literally just having fun the whole time. Yeah. So Jordan, as a firearms instructor with your department, if there was one lesson or even two lessons that you'd want to bring back and have everyone try to adopt or that you'd want to teach, what would it be? Um, well, I'm not a firearms instructor yet. Okay. As in someone, the, yeah, that's right. Yeah. As someone who's a, on the cusp. On the cusp. Um, one of the things I really appreciate from the class was John takes the core fundamentals of just shooting period, leverage, pressure, grip, all of that. And they're, they're the same for both rifle and pistol, but the application of them is just a little bit different, right? It's all the, – the leverage is the same. It's a principle. Here's how you apply it to the pistol. Here's how you apply it to the handgun. 
And so I think if, if, if I could do as good of a job as John did explaining the core fundamentals, I think that would help everybody. I mean, I mean, I've been shooting for a while and I still, and I thought I knew, you know, the core fundamentals, but when John explained it, I'm like, Oh, light bulb moment, you know? So it's just a different way. Yeah. And, and that was one thing too, is John's like, you know what, try it this way. Everybody's different. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. No harm, no foul, man. You rock on. If it works for you, great. Use it. So, mm -hmm. and that was big for me too. Cause like, I mean, I've done in-service stuff with the rifle or whatever, and it's, you know, collapse your stock, put it in the pocket, <laughs> hang on, hang on to the ride. Get down. Yeah. Get down. <laughs> Lower do the, center gravity. Yeah. Do the goblin squat to walk or whatever. And, <laughs> and John's like, nah, dog, stand up extend that stock out and you've on that rifle it's going to do its thing but you control it in the end so that was that was huge for me too you're its master man yeah it's sitting there like use me and i'm like <laughs> sure thing so <laughs> absolutely well that was something that was very interesting to see not only as the shooter and being told hey stand up and don't crouch <laughs> uh, but to also see other shooters doing that and seeing their overall performance change and improve once that posture goes back to normal and they're walking like a human, Hey, they're, they're shooting better. They're moving better. Yeah. Dude, and it was, it was instantaneous too. Mm -hmm. Like guys would switch in the middle of a drill and stand up and you're like, Holy shit. Now he's hitting everything. Yeah. And it's, it's just because all the processing, all the data is actually going in with good timing. Well, we, we saw that with you, Matt. I mean, being a tall guy, it was like exaggerated, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matt was crouched down. It's, you know, his neck's all craned and everything. Then he stands up. You're like, I know. It felt more relaxing to me watching you stand up. Well, that's you know? good. <laughs> <laughs> it was relaxing for me. It hurts so good. It does. I noticed that same thing, especially with John's longer strings of fire. You know, you'd start shooting eight rounds at a, at a time. And halfway through, I would consciously tell myself to stand up, push my shoulder forward, and I would see that dot start to track straighter immediately. And even even today, you know, I did some dry fire last night and did a little bit of range time today. I have to I have to consciously tell myself stand up, get don't get down over the gun, don't crouch, don't grouch a walk. All the stuff you've learned for ten years, you can better that. You know, if you consciously put the thought into it. Absolutely. And I remember being told, okay, the reason why we're going to crouch is we're going to lower the center of gravity. We're going to be more stable, uh, a smaller target, all that kind of stuff. And then John basically says, well, you know, the, just use your shock absorbers, put everything in your arms, let your, your uh, what, runaway sticks? You get, let your getaway, getaway sticks. Do yeah, getaway. Get them do their thing. Let your body do its thing. You're going to be fine. Holy crap, it works. Yeah, it absolutely does. And, uh, and it's funny. Um, so all that groucho stuff, like lower your center of gravity and all that stuff, like they're not, they're not saying that because that's what they experienced. They're saying they that because that's what they were told. Yep. Right. So that, and, and I call that tactical telephone, right. All the bullshit that's like trickled down over the years through instructor to instructor to instructor to instructor. And then next thing you know, you're being told this stuff. And, and if you went, if you said why, they just give you the same explanation. They just give up. Well, it lowers your center of gravity. Well, why? Well, because it'll make you more stable. How? Right? <laughs> uh, because. Just do it. <laughs> it also fatigued me a lot quicker as yeah. opposed to walking like a human. Yeah. Walking like you normally do. Yeah. Right? right? We're, we're, we're supposed to be at that elevated level of, of human, you know? And you see that, that evolution, like, from crouchy, crouchy, bend over, like, hunchback to – you know, eventually becoming what we are now, we stand up, right? Uh, and, and, and like I was saying, like in the class even, like now, you're, now your peepers are in the right spot. And that means your peepers can see, that means they can receive all the data and, and kaboom, right? When my dot is there and it's ready to do the thing, it's like, right? And I can, I can take the shot at the right time versus down here and now I'm having a, a really, uh, I guess uh, there's some more lag time. Yeah. And, and that causes a lot of people's misses. So it's cool. And, and I loved, I loved pointing it out the second somebody stand stood up and they were hitting and I was like, Booyah. Like, and I turn around and let you guys know that I, what, what we're seeing. And, uh, and it was cool to see that firsthand. It's always a great time for me, uh, but it, it just validates what I'm telling you guys right Absolutely. there in front of your eyes. Absolutely. So, it it uh, kind of makes me regret uh, classes from years ago 
several thousand rounds of rifle and, and two, three days. And that's all I was doing was getting low and all that. Damn it. Why wasn't I walking? I would have been so, I would be so much of a better shooter now. You, if I were be, doing it right. Be fantastically better. Damn it. Where, where, where were you 10, 15, 20 years ago? 10 years ago, still in high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in my senior year of high school. <laughs> you're, you're dating yourself now, Matt. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, 10 years ago when I was taking this course, ooh, buddy, like 10 years ago, <laughs> didn't we have like the assault weapon ban? Like, <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, so, no, it, 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 uh, didn't it just uh, expire? It was just expiring, yeah. yeah. So, because, yeah, I think my first Pat Rogers class was about 10 years ago. Maybe a little the, longer. And, uh, and then a year after that is when I got into uh, the Ranger Regiment. So, and that's where I learned my Gratro walk, right? And then, and then realizing, like, wait, we Gratro walk when we're in daytime, but then we stand up and walk when we're using night vision? Like, why? And if I asked why, it was like, shut up, do what you're told. <laughs> you're like, I do push-ups. Like, I want to know more, right? And uh, and. <laughs> That's actually one of the things I, I really like Chuck about uh, Presper and uh, and the way that he looks at things. Like I, I, I can see that he wasn't that kind of soldier where he was like, just do what I say. It was more like, Hey, we're going to do this because this 20 minute conversation about why, why this is necessary. And then, and then somehow go out on a tangent on like ra radios or something. And and like, I love that kind of knowledge. I wish I had a, a leader like him uh, that would have, would have actually explained things to me uh, instead of just tell me what to do. And then I'm expected to just somehow do it. And like, I think that that would be a better way of, of building more competent soldiers in the long run too. And, and as you guys saw throughout the class too, the, the more I explained things and, and kept it light and kept it fun, the more people learned it all. So it wasn't like a, uh, like even, even uh, damn, I can't remember his name is weird, but, he was brand new to the rifle, right? His first day, right? Using that thing. And, and he was doing great by the end of the day. He was, he was on it. He was, he was shooting that thing fast, a little faster than he should have been, but on some <laughs> things, but other than that, he was, he was rocking away on that thing. He was happy. And was that Preston that was brand new? No, not Preston. Um, um, Enoch. Enoch. There Enoch. you go. That's yeah. right. Why, it's some weird name. I couldn't remember. Sorry. Dude, and that that was impressive too. He literally went from like I've never shot this thing really. He didn't even know where a zero was to now yeah. he's now he's slammed away with the rest of us like he's been doing it for years. It was awesome. Yeah, and that's just because of the the presentation of the, the the information and and obviously his own personal skill and and receiving that information. Like he was dedicated to learning, and and those are the kind of students you want in class too. You don't want the guy that's like in freaking la la land the whole time looking up in the sky although the skies out there were beautiful and i was probably looking at the sky more um it was one of those things like you, you'll see like the students that are really into it start picking it up and i didn't see anybody in the class really like in la la land i think i kept the attention of most people because i try to you know keep it light and keep it fun and uh and give out the information that you guys need um for the no no at all either which was nice yeah. 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 We didn't have any of those, uh, which is always good. Um, I usually stop those guys in their tracks and, uh, and I'm like, Oh, okay. All right. I mean, uh, I'll go stand over there. I'm going to shoot then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not to be a dick, but to like, you know, remind them like, Hey man, like let me do my thing and you can do your thing. Right. And, and if you listen without the mouth moving, you pick up more stuff. So it's, <laughs> And, and it's, I try to be nice about it and make it fun and joking, but, but yeah, definitely try to like keep those guys uh, at bay sometimes. Um, but it's like any, it's like being at a comedy show and somebody's heckling you. If you can heckle them better, you win. <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing I did want to bring up was John's classroom class environment was awesome. Keeps it light, makes fun of everybody. So yeah, don't, everybody don't feel is. like you're a special snowflake cause you're going to get it. <laughs> and and I think that was, that was huge. It makes everybody want to pay more attention. Everybody's having a good time, which makes the whole attitude of the students attending better. And I brought that up, you know, after I for a pistol the first day, I was appreciative of the dudes that showed up and wanted to learn and were open to the information and, and all that. So. Yeah. 
definitely. And I've also noticed the the more I keep it light and fun, the less I lose people because they want to be included in the fun, right? They don't want to miss a joke and turn around and be like, oh man, what did he say? That was funny. Everybody's laughing, right? <laughs> they right. want to be included in it so that they're more attentive in the course. And that's that's something I got out of uh, out of a class in, in college with uh, public speaking, right? If, if I can keep the attention of everybody, right, by keeping it light and fun and, and joke about certain things, then the entire audience will pay attention the entire time and not be on their phones or, or sitting there falling asleep or anything like that. And uh, in that course, I actually taught uh, one of my speeches was I had to teach something and I taught people how to use tourniquets. So <laughs> it was pretty awesome. I showed an IED video and like bodies and I had to make sure that with the professor, I was good to show it all, but it, it he was like, yeah, man, it'll be a pretty good shock for them, I guess. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I even put a, I think a picture of me and where I used to keep my tourniquet on my kit, like rubber band over. And, uh, and like, and then later that rubber band was used on that deployment, like on a human. Right. And they're like, Oh my gosh. And all these like, you know, straight out of high school kind of kids are like sitting there like, what? Where, who's this guy? Like, <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, it's super fun being a veteran in one of those classes. And you're like, I'm here on my GI Bill. All right, let's learn. Right. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then when it's your turn to teach something, they, it, it baffles some of the kids. It's pretty cool. So it's, it's nice. It's nice. I thought it was a good time, but that's one of those skills I got from college. So college is good to an extent guys go to college. Maybe sort of, maybe if you want, <laughs> If you feel like you need it. All about the chicks and the tourniquets. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Those kids got a pretty good class on tourniquets, by the way. <laughs> so for me, the, the two things that just stick out in my mind right now, and I'm sure it would change tomorrow if I, if I really, really thought about it, but it was the eye orientation or head orientation and um, transitions with targets, the shooting cadence. And those two things – these are things that I can practice at home. These, they, they can, this can be dry fire stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I probably should, I should probably walk upright anyway and not do Groucho with my na- normal daily walk, but, You're not um, a game, man, man. <laughs> yeah. And those, and those were, that, those were two things that I discussed with, yeah, with staff at work and they were impressed by it. It made a lot of sense. Also the, uh, what you talked about, uh, what was, what was it? It was when to start thinking about pressing that trigger on a target. That was good stuff. Yeah. Right now, or just we, do we wait? Do we wait until it crosses a threshold and then you start applying pressure? What a concept. It's like you got to time things in your yeah. life. <laughs> When's a good time to say that bad thing to your wife when she's almost out the door for work and she's late. Cause then you're like, talk to you later. Like, uh, like <laughs> she's late. So, <laughs> by the way, I'm going to the range while you're at work. Bye. <laughs> That's, I think that might be dependent on the wife. I was gonna say, I think you underestimate my wife's ability to to remember something the entire day, <laughs> or just turn around and have a discussion. You know, what? I'm gonna be late on purpose. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why I don't have a wife. <laughs> My wife just stuck her head around the corner and was glaring at me. <laughs> Job, John. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> so, Mike, for you, what were some of the things, some of the highlights for you? A couple things that stood out. You just covered, Matt. I love the transition part, and I still struggle with it. Same I a, here. I'm shooting doubles and triples and then trying to transition and catch up. Um, staying vertical head positioning. So my eyes are centered up. Um, one thing that I really noticed about myself is if I'm moving forward or back, whether it's handgun or carving, I shoot fairly decent on the straight, but you put me on the diagonal and I'm a soup sandwich. (laughs) It's just all it is. I just turned you just a little bit. Yeah. And it's, it's a complete different world. So I like that. I like being humbled. It gives me something to work on. You know, Mm -hmm. if if all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Then what do you do next? So, and it definitely, it, Straight up handed me my ass when you turned me on the 45. <laughs> <laughs> All of us, dude. All of us. <laughs> and and it, it's just because nobody practices that. 
uh, well, I won't say nobody. There's very small amounts of humans that actually practice moving at diagonals. And what you'll notice is, uh, is diagonal movement is what you'll see inside structures more often because you're working your corner. And then as you're, you're going in, by the time you're done with your, your point or at your point of domination inside of a structure, that's when you've already gone through the diagonal shooting or whatever you have to do. And then you're horizontal, like it, you're stopped right at that point. So it's like, wait a minute. So we needed that, but we've never done it. But somehow they're telling us we don't have to, because they're not making us do it. Like it's a whole mess. So I'm glad, I'm glad it like, it opened up some new, new avenues for you guys. In that one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are some of the things that stood out. The longer strings of fire that, like I said, that brought up, that showed me my weaknesses, you know, my grip is good until around seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can fake two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fake so two I have a lot of stuff to work on. I'm stoked for the next class. I'm stoked for next year. Um, it's going to be a long winter. <laughs> Waiting. But I have plenty of stuff to practice, so I need a little bit of time. I think something that's really neat about this that uh, Mike and I both have brought up is this is universal. It's not just pistol. It's not just carbine. This is... These are universal concepts that we can apply to anything, even shotgun, if we wanted to. Yeah. 1301. <clears throat> <It's> cheating. <laughs> cheating. So, Josh, how about you? Uh, yeah, so for me, it's, it's funny because I think we talked about this at the end of each day, and I brought up two different things, but as I've had time to think back, back on it, or actually the way I should put it is the thing that keeps coming up in my mind and I've like been mentally going through and replaying is the, uh, the whole idea of focus on the process and not necessarily the result. Yes, good um, one. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's interesting because it's, it's not the first time I've heard that or it's not the first time it's been taught to me, um, but I feel like this is the first time where I grasp it. So maybe it's a combination of like where I am as a shooter and the way John presented it, it just meshed really well. Um, you know, being able to track my, so I was using an LPVO with a red dot in it. So I was, you know, being able to track that dot and, you know, I, I've heard it before. You're like, you know, well, you should know where your round's going based on when you pull the trigger. I'm like, okay, well, I have no freaking clue. Like, yeah, you, you tell me that. But then the, the whole demonstration of like the different, you know, ways the dot can go and what that means. I still have a hard time actually seeing my dot doing that. I'll admit I have a hard time <laughs> with it. But, you know, seeing the check mark and the Vs and like, you know, the down left and stuff and actually going through that and talking about it. Um, that helped me start to notice that mine was doing that. And so I, I, I feel like I grasped it a little bit, like actually during the two days, but that's definitely something I'm going to focus on moving forward um, is paying attention to that. And I feel like um, I actually watched a video myself do the final shoot on the rifle day. And I feel like I was able to, I, so I, on the last still target, I missed my first shot. And I feel like I got my second shot off before I could even see the dust cloud of the first shot missing, or at least before I could process that. Yeah, and so follow. it's like, dang, dang, yeah, like exactly. I, I did it that time. Okay. Now how did I do that? I want to be able to do that every time. <laughs> how do I do that again? <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what I've been playing in my mind and uh, thinking, okay, that's next time I go to the range, which is soon, hopefully I'm going to pay special attention to that. And I, I really want to get that under control because you know, my deficiencies right now, that that'll help me a ton. Good. That timing exercise we did with the, the circle and going around that'll, oh, help, you with that. yeah. that'll help you with uh, okay. that timing and the processing and, and seeing what, what the dots doing in relation. Cause, cause it's just a fun little exercise. It's not even like a timer and there's no craziness going on. There's no like a round count. All you, it's just you and your gun. Yeah. You, you and you can, you can get a lot out of that one. To me, what was crazy about that is I was attempting to do that. Stop reset. You're like, no, just make it one motion. Hey, it's working. What the hell? <laughs> Just go with the flow, girl. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jordan, I think you have the most difficult question so far oh, out of oh. everyone. So for you, what were the, what were the highlights? Um, Since we the, already covered all the good ones. Right. The eye movement stuff was big for me too. Cause I mean, I've, I've, you know, shot a little bit of USPSA, a little bit of, you know, Utah peace officer association matches or whatever. And, I've done some of that and a little bit of competition, but I'm always like double tap move and the eye thing of, okay, we'll track your dot. And then eyes go first dot comes second. I heard that before, but I never tried to apply it. So applying it was, was beneficial for me. Um, 
the cadence thing I've already mentioned that was was big for me that was a big one and then um there was one more but I can't remember come back to me you'll think of it when we end well probably <laughs> yeah I, I, oh, I like the class stock yep. position oh okay yeah John's like here's this sacred cow that everybody's preached I'm gonna kill it try it this way and see what happens <laughs> and you're like oh my gosh look what just happened i'm shooting so much better all, all the indian people were just like john slaughtered a cow <laughs> <laughs> but but and it was cool because he's like you know what this is what everybody does try it my way if it works it doesn't if it does rock on and and so having an open mind and being like well this is my first rifle class and i'm open to slaughtering of cows let's let's try something so Neat beef. Yeah. Okay. And you got steak out of it. Look at that. Yeah, I did. Actually, I think we had steak multiple nights. Oh, yeah. I've never eaten that much Brazilian food in that short time. I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure you guys did slaughter a cow between those two nights in a row. <laughs> but it was delicious. The second night was interesting with all those kids in there. Yeah. Uh, the high school kids going in there. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. And the More deflated problem. waiter when you didn't want what he was offering you. Oh, he was very upset. Very upset with us. How dare you not want what I'm serving that's randomly organized and I'm coming in rotation. Wait, it's our trout. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I noticed, which was completely separate, but it was regarding the stock positioning and just habits. So I've always been a, I think I've been fully collapsed and one out. So with a law folder, that's about two snaps out. Mm -hmm. um, I've That's how I've shot a carbine forever up until recently, and I haven't had enough reps. I found myself kind of dangling the rifle out from my body and not shoving the stock under my arm, whereas what I'd do is I'd kind of leverage, up, yeah, leverage it up against my forearm when it was shorter. Okay. That was uh, kind of an interesting I, – I was in the middle of a, of a reload once, and I realized, why isn't my stock as stable as it normally is? Okay, it's the stock's up further. Oh, that's why. Okay. So, yeah, that was a – it's funny how just one little change like that, you have to change a lot more and, and train more. You can't just, cha you can't just change up your, your setup and expect it to work for you just fine. It's going to require some reps and practice and due diligence on your part. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that today. I changed my thumb positioning on my handgun after John talked about grip and stuff, and I went to do some dry fire today and went right back to – my old grip and I'm like nope yes back it off do it the right way do it slow do it right so well that was another thing that John did with uh, discovery mode and just talking about thumb position and finger position and all that with handguns and I thought it's a great opportunity for people to actually learn about themselves and how they optimally perform yep not enough yep. of that going on it's do this yeah, or this is the drill do this drill not let's refine your your abilities yeah, every class started with some foundational discussion and some some experimentation and then working on that. And then the final stuff was culmination uh, events where everything was thrown in together. And it uh, worked out great, as it should. Skill stacking. Yeah. It's like I planned like the class or something. Yeah. <laughs> like what I was going to go through or, you know, like, my teaching points and how I was going to do it. Crazy. Yeah. It almost seemed like you taught it before or something. Yeah. It's like, it's like I've done it a couple times or so. And like, <laughs> or, or like, like Matt said, I, I refined it somehow in, in the short time. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, I enjoy it, man. It's, it's literally like, like you guys saw, it's, it's my passion. So I'm going to, I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy it. And, uh, and a little, little, uh, philosophy stuff here. Like, like every single day I try to do something I enjoy no matter what, like no matter what, whether it's, I, I had a horrible day and I'm just going like, to go get some ice cream because it's going to cheer me up or I had a great day and I'm going to still do something else like go to the beach or, you know, go for a swim or go for the, go to the gym and do something I actually enjoy. Or I have a pull-up bar in, in my bear cave now. So, or use my pull-up bar, you know, like do something I enjoy doing or, or that gives me joy every single day, like live my best life period. 
and uh, and that's what I do. And and you guys uh, you guys got a pretty good taste of it and like see me on the range. Like that's uh not everybody gets to see me on the range. Usually just students or friends and uh, or competitors, but they're usually like in their own worlds. Um, but I, I literally enjoy it like every minute, and uh, and it always makes me happy to see other students see that and enjoy it as well. Uh, maybe it's contagious, or I hope so. But uh, but what it is is just at least you guys are getting something out of it, whether you're seeing things done in a certain manner or or you're getting that same feeling, right? Because I try to make it a contagious thing, and then uh, and then my sound effects, right? I always do those sound effects for you guys. Mainly keep me on task. <laughs> well, it definitely shows, though, with your enjoyment of all this. No question. Absolutely no question. I just want a soundboard of your sound effects to play through my ear pro when I go to the range. Yeah, every time I try to do something throughout the day, I hear the minions turning the wheels and cranking the levers. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> They're always working, man. And you got to keep them busy. Got to keep them busy. So uh, then, Mike, my question for you, are they little naked Johns? Yes. You know, there's a few things that we mentioned in the class that I'm not going to bring up right now. <laughs> After, right? What? For the best of everybody. And out of respect for Josh's wife, since she's already hiding around the corner watching. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. Yes. I, I keep thinking in my head, be a thinking animal. I think that was something that really stands out. You know, just, just don't go through the motions, man. Use your head. Use your brain. Do it right. I mean, that's that's what makes us superior to all the other species, right? Supposedly, um, for some of some of us. <laughs> I'll just keep dragging my knuckles. Yeah, yeah. me me learn no more. <laughs> um, but but uh, yeah, man. I mean, damn, why not? If we can do it, why not? Hey, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of trying new things, so that that keeps me thinking. So I'm I'm a big. Uh, advocate to keep pushing people to do different things and try new things and i think i i i plugged in and told you guys all to like try go go to a competition like just go do it fuck it i mean if you lose you lose right like go see like what happens right maybe you do a great job you know like um last year uh december i went to a uh an executive protection conference right and it was there were dudes from the FBI, the Secret Service, the CIA, like all these different letter agencies, private companies, and dudes that have so much experience. Um, and uh, and the first day of this conference was a shooting competition, right? And all these dudes are going out there with all their man cheesemo. You know, they're like, oh, I'm fucking badass. You know, me mugging everybody and things like that. And you're like, cool. Like, I'm just going to smile here with my Star Wars t-shirt because that's me. Right. And, and dudes had no idea what they're getting themselves into because, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, all right, how am I going to do the stage? How am I going to do this? They're all talking about like work. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, perfect. Right. I ended up uh, winning and the second place guy was like 21 seconds behind me. Right. Like, which, which is astronomical on, on the, the competition level. And, uh, and at the conference, right, the, the second day, which is we're all wearing suits and stuff, and I get up on the on the podium because they wanted to let, you know, hey, guys, this is John. He won top shooter, uh, won first place yesterday at the shooting competition with 160-something, like, professionals. Um, and uh, and I was like, oh, thanks, you know, and, and they wanted me to say something. So, of course, like, I get up there immediately, and I make everybody feel like shit. So I, <laughs> I get up there, and I'm like, Hey guys, I'm John Dufresne. Uh, I'm the owner of Kinetic Consulting, and uh, you guys need to practice more. <laughs> yeah, drop the mic. And, yeah, it, uh, it was on a podium, so I couldn't drop it. I thought drop about pushing it. <laughs> I definitely thought about pushing it, like, you know, let it, let it fall off the front of the podium or of the stage, but um, thought thought more professional, right? And, and was like, all right, let me let me just like, uh, you know, walk off this thing, but. Yeah, it was it was funny, and after that, I got a few phone calls and emails about like training some teams that were, you know, protecting some some uh, important peeps. So it was cool. Like it was a great opportunity for me to kind of showcase some skill and some knowledge. But the best part was just telling them they need to practice more. And then anybody that was at symposium that that is watching or or was there, like you, 
you know, the last two years I won first place and each, each year I've, I've gotten up there in front of all the shooters, calm them down while I'm holding all my prizes. And I'm like, y'all need to practice more. Like that's it. Like <laughs> I leave. Right. And, <laughs> and it's true though. Like, um, and, and I feel bad to an extent because like, yeah, I'm like shoving it in their face to an extent, but, but the greatest part was it came back the second year and there were guys there that were like, dude, all year long, all I could think was I want to beat Duffy. Like I, I want to beat John. I want to make sure that he's, he loses. He's just one, one below me the whole time. Like I, I want to win. Right. And I love that. I love that because not only do I want to try and beat them still, but now I'm making them better shooters by making them want to beat me. Like, that's awesome. Like that's my goal, right? That's, that's the goal is to make better shooters. So it's, it's really cool and, and to see it in a different aspect. So not only on the teaching side, but even just competing against other shooters and forcing them to, to try and beat me. And, um, and I love that. I love, I love a little bit of competition and some fun and, and laughter and, and just enjoy yourself kind of stuff. It's my style. Cool. So let's see here off the top of your head quickly. What's your entire catalog of courses that you teach? Uh, so for me, I have my pistol mechanics class. I have my rifle mechanics class. Which both you guys all saw the first day or so of those. And then, um, and then I have my, my stop the bleed courses that I do, which is like a lecture slash hands-on medical class. Um, night vision. I'm a huge night vision fan and uh, teach a lot of different versions of night vision, whether it's just learning to use it initially, um, a bunch of different LE courses for night vision, and then also a night vision CQB course. Um, and that's more team oriented also for like the SWAT team. I also teach low light stuff. I'm a big fan of playing in the dark. Like that's what Rangers do. We go hunting in the dark. And, uh, and so that's, that's where I bring the experience of, of playing in the darkness and also keeping people up until four in the morning. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> and then I also have the, uh, my weaponized geometry course, which is like a, like what you can imagine a single officer response type of course would be like, you know, clearing a building by yourself or dealing with structural, um, geometry, uh, with a weapon, um, by yourself or one man, like home defense type of thing. Like, Hey, I need to, I need to clear my way to my child's room so that I can make sure they're protected so that I can go ahead and take care of business if need be or protect them from where I am. And that, that's what that course is about is understanding the geometry that you're going to be working in. And th that's kind of the core of what I teach. Um, I also have like RDS specific courses for, for the, the good old red dot handguns, but um, that's mainly the instructor course for like law enforcement agencies. Um, I don't really do an instructor course for civilians, not to say that they can't have it, but it's just like, it's, it's not usually something they need uh, to instruct. It's, it's usually the law enforcement guys are trying to teach the other guys. Um, and then what's cool about that, if they're a local law enforcement agency, I usually come out for their classes and actually help them teach it too. So, and that's not an extra charge or anything. I do it because I, I want them to be better. Um, for example, uh, Fort Lauderdale SWAT hired me in August to teach a red dot instructor course for 15 of their dudes. And I taught the class and then they have a class coming up, uh, I believe soon. And, uh, and I'll be at that class while they teach their other dudes so I can refine it and, and let them know like, Hey, also don't forget this. You know, let me, let me jump in here, whatever it is to help them out. And because I care, I, I really do care about making shooters better. So that's the kind of stuff I do now. So when is weaponized algebra or trigonometry? <laughs> well, Weaponized geometry. I think Josh and I talked about it right in June. Um, June no, 15th, I mean, I want, but I, I want weaponized algebra. Well, we can do that afterwards. Okay. That, that'll be when I, we'll I be might need weaponized insane. like pre algebra or something. But. <laughs> 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 well, X and B and Y equal a thing. Um, no, but we'll, in, in uh, Utah, we'll have it in June, June 5th and 6th. And I'm hoping to like, if enough people want to do another day of it or another two days of it, um, or there's overflow from that class, uh, the seventh and eighth as well. So that's what Josh and I have right now on the calendar. And then, um, and then anybody that's around the United States, like 
if you go on my website, uh, kinetic-consulting.net, you'll see a list on the homepage of all the classes coming up that are in different locations, a majority in Florida, uh, because that's my home state. So I do a lot down here. Um, but I travel all over the place. So, and then I always encourage people email me or, or message me or something and, uh, to set up a class. I'm always down. Like I love going new places. Like you can ask all four of these dudes. Like I, I was staring at the mountains because I don't get to see them. And I love it. I think beautiful scenery is like one of the best things in the world and people miss out on. Cool. Well then let's get some final thoughts and some plugs and all that other kind of stuff. Jordan, what do you have for us? Um, not much, John. Thanks for coming out. Well, I'm definitely going to try to be to uh, weaponized geometry in June. And then if you're doing anything low light in the area, I'd love to come take a low light class too. So um, appreciated, appreciated the two days. I learned a ton and hopefully going to you soon, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Mike. I have a question first for John, like with your weaponized geometry class, man, would it benefit somebody if you're going to do, you know, two courses back to back to run them both? Or are you better off just to take the single and then go home and, and apply the principles? Uh, you mean like the two back-to-back -back of the same class? Yeah, back-to-back. -back. Are you going to gain anything from the second two days or are you just hanging out? So, yeah. so personally, I think you would just because you're going to be – you're going to get more reps, right? You're going to get more more uh, reps. You'll already get the – it's like reading the chapter before taking or, or looking at it in class. Like you already have an idea of what's going to go on and you've seen what, what we're going to learn for the day and you can now answer more or you can ask more educated questions. You could actually help other students to top it off too. Like, Oh, like two days ago when I was taking this part, like I got shot in the face because I did this stupid thing. Right. <laughs> like, and, and the best part about it too is that class is, uh, is I'm, I bring the ammo, I bring the guns and 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 masks and you guys bring a little bit of protective gear and you don't need to pay for anything else except for snacks and random stuff but I, you know, that's that's part of the reason why i ask is is the, the the utm being already and you're paying for it whatever i don't have to bring ammo <laughs> it's just as easy to stay on for for the four days as it is for the two for me when i have to drive into town yeah, that's true, because you're driving in, uh, what, four or five hours or something? Yeah, four hours. And so if you take the ammo cost out, then the, all of a sudden the four-day class, it's it's pretty reasonable. And if you're going to get those extra reps, then why not? Yeah, especially if you're not going to take a force-on-force -force class in the near future, too. And uh, and that's that's where you're going to get it, and we're going to have fun. I, I love that class. <laughs> um, no, man, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all these guys, uh, Matt, Josh, putting this on Jordan showing me up you know, <laughs> John for your time I'm, I'm down with the weaponized geometry uh, stop the bleed would be awesome yeah that Maybe would be stuff, good, yeah. anything low light I mean just depends how much time you're willing to spend in Utah I guess and it, I I'd prefer doing low light when it's not going to be like like freezing cold at night like as long as I'm not going to die in the desert because it's so cold I'll be all right <laughs> <laughs> dude honestly June would be a good time because it's it's hot all day, but then it cools off pretty significantly at night. So I mean, June would work, but uh, you're a busy man. So you do you. Sure, I don't mind coming back out in June again. <laughs> the classes just would have to start a lot later, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. Josh. Yeah. Thanks for coming out, John. I'm glad we made this work and uh, you know, thanks for all your, teaching and input. It was fun spending a lot of time with you driving back and forth and stuff and picking your brain. And we had some interesting d discussions in the truck and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, if anyone that's, you know, ends up watching or listening to this is in or around Utah or wants to travel to Utah, we got some pretty awesome stuff coming up, you know, and not the least of which is with John and connect consulting. Um, but I know a lot of John's buddies are coming out too. You know, we got Paul Van Dunn from pace performance, Steve Fisher from Sentinel concepts, um, Craig, you know, Craig, yep. Craig from Shiv works is coming out. Um, we got modern samurai project coming out to do his red dot stuff. Um, so we got lots of cool stuff on the schedule. So if any of you guys are interested, just check out pew pew solutions.com. Um, and we'll be posting John's classes in June up there shortly. Um, 
So we're going to give the guys that were in this class kind of first dibs, um, give them a little bit of time to sign up. And that's why we decided to do the back to back courses possibly. We got enough interest. Um, so, you know, these guys can get in the class and then anyone else in the area that wants to join in on it. And um, we'll have plenty of opportunities and space for that. Cause I mean, one of the things I like about John too, is he keeps his classes somewhat small and this one's even smaller. It's max of 12 people. So that will make the, it a better learning experience. Um, but if we do back to back, then that means, 24 of us get that experience or for, you know, Mike and his buddies that he brings down, they'll get four days of it. So. And I'll, vouch, yep. I'll vouch for Josh real quick, man. You did, you did a good job putting everything together. I was impressed. You had everything ready to go. All we had to do is show up with guns and ammo and, and it was smooth rolling. So I, I appreciated that, man. And I'll definitely be coming back to training in the future. Cool. Hey, Jordan, thanks. Jordan, did you ever get your uh, waiver form filled out? Yes, I did. Okay, just just want to make sure. <laughs> junk mail, man, junk mail. <laughs> it says wafer spam. That's right. <laughs> hey, John, your turn. Uh, so I, I really do appreciate it. Like like I told you guys the last last day, um, I really really appreciate having students that want to learn. Um, a lot of times, dudes dudes get thrown into classes, especially the contracted ones that don't really want to learn. They don't want to be there. Right. They think they know it and then they get humbled and usually they all leave like, wow, that was actually worth my time. And, and that's the best, right? That's, that's awesome. Uh, but it's always good to start with already knowing that these students want to get that. And, and it shows, I mean, you registered for the course, you, you paid some harder money, you traveled some of you and like that, that takes a lot. And, uh, and that's always, that's always humbling for me. And then, to have like dudes that, that know how to shoot and that, uh, that have been through other classes like Matt, so it's like a thousand, you know, hours or so of, of already training classes. Like that, that makes you think you're like, well, what can I teach him? But then, you know, then you'll find a thing, right? I'll find There's a lot. Yeah. And, and <laughs> he's a slow learner guys. Um, <laughs> no, but, um, but it's cool it's definitely like, it's, it's an awesome experience for me and, and, uh, always getting to go somewhere. So, um, a way to get in touch with me, if anything, uh, it is my website. My website has my email stuff on there. It has all my social media on there. It has my YouTube on there. And, uh, and all of that, I, I usually respond to everything pretty quick. Um, I'm not so popular or, or too popular to, to chit chat and, and answer questions for you guys. And, I actually sent a video this morning to some guy who was asking me about bent elbows and like, and like, what do I mean? And I, I filmed a two minute little video and sent it to him because that takes two minutes out of my life to help a dude that it may save a life. Right. So that, that's well, you were on the toilet, which was, yeah, different. I mean, it, it was interesting. I did waste up, so he's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I, you know, I'm one of those guys that takes his shirt off to poop. So no, <laughs> What a weirdo. I don't want to trade with that guy. Um, yeah, it must be getting a little late. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the toilet the whole time we've been here. <laughs> my legs are asleep. I can't stand up. That's what that echo is, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my nasally cold. The elbow spots on your legs. Um, so, so yeah. So, I, I, don't, I don't have, uh, you know, I'm not too good for, for answering some questions and helping people out. So if you have them, ask them. If you you need some help, let me know. If you want to host a class, let me know. I'm always down. And what's the website? Uh, Kinetic-Consulting.net. And uh, I'm sure Matt's going to link it below or or when he posts this to the, uh, the World Wide Web. So. And also on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. all, the, all the major outlets. Yeah, pretty much. I, I don't have a Twitter, though. Hmm. Uh, I don't usually, or I, I kind of care less about that, but, but yeah, on my website, there's a bunch of links for all that at the top, you know, there's little social media links and stuff. So you can find, as long as you get to the website, you can get my email and you can get tons of stuff from there. And, uh, and then I also have my blog, which has tons of information, a ton of information. So, uh, and I post things regularly up there, which, um, don't get a lot of views because people just don't realize it's there, I guess, or I'm just not popular enough, I guess but it's definitely a wealth of info that's on there and uh, this will get added as well. I try to add these things to it too. 
You know, actually, that might not be a bad idea to start up Twitter then, because usually if you have some kind of a, a blog thing, you can auto post. Oh, really? And I imagine you'll probably get followers without any without any uh, difficulty. And it's at, at least it's one additional avenue to spread the word. Maybe I'll try it. Yeah. I'm already trying to juggle all the other ones. I'm like, oh, yeah. geez. And it's, yeah, for me, I have Twitter, but it's automated. If anything posts on, what is it, on YouTube or on primaryandsecondary.com, they're automatically forwarded to Twitter. Oh, I don't have cool. to do anything to them. That's just one more point of uh, distribution. Cool. Yeah. I'll think about that, yeah. Well, thanks all for for joining us for the discussion. Thanks, John, to come for coming out and great class. Again, this is one of those classes where it's absolutely suitable for a beginner. It's, if anything, it's recommended for a beginner. There are a lot of really good foundational things that were discussed that I wish I heard 20 years ago. Um, great stuff. Not only is this great information for a beginner, it's great information for a veteran, a seasoned whatever shooter person who's been carrying guns forever. And, it, and even for that person that's been carrying guns forever that actually took training, they don't, they're not that common. Um, wonderful, wonderful classes. Uh, great, great energy throughout, not only with a student, but, or not only with an instructor, but that, uh, that energy from the instructor was easily transferred to the students. And it was, it was a, there was a, definitely a give and take, and it was a very pleasant atmosphere and an excellent learning uh, atmosphere. Love the class. Big thanks to Filster Holsters for, for being a sponsor of the podcast. If you're looking for a low-profile means of carrying medical equipment, you should probably go to filster.com. They have all kinds of stuff. If you want to carry a, a tourniquet on you, flat back. Facts on firearms, you need spare gun parts. You need new barrels at, on occasion. Check out Facts on Firearms. Walther Firearms, again, this PPQ, it's just a nice pistol. Um, we shot a little bit of the uh, Q5 steel frame after the, cl after the course, and uh, some people liked it. That might be something that you should look at, too. Walther just has some cool, cool guns. That's all there is to it. Um, lastly, big thank you to the Patreon subscribers. If you go to patreon.com slash primary and secondary, you can help support the network. You can start with a dollar a month. You can go up to sky's the limit. There are benefits involved uh, for supporting us. We give you some perks, um, but it's definitely appreciated. Our supporters definitely help all of this run very, very smoothly. Uh, one thing I also like to emphasize is support those sources that you have found to be beneficial. If you've been watching John and if you've, if you've been enjoying what he's had to say, definitely follow him on social media. We have friends, we have mutual friends who are, they've run into some, we're run into some issues because you know, they're providing some outstanding content, but for some reason they don't quite have the following that they should. And then we have other people that are kind of promoting some questionable content that have huge followings. Just doesn't make any sense to me, but oh well. Make sure you're following those sources that you found to be beneficial. Um, it helps everyone out in the long run because what it's doing is it's making sure that the good guys are, well, they're getting the attention they deserve, like John, like Varg, like Pressburg, Blowers, all those good guys. Um, we have a great network among primary and secondary. Believe it or not, John is also a moderator, has been for a while. Um, yeah, we have a great group of people, and it's it's great to be able to support each other. Um, that's yeah, it's it's amazing the, the 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 people that we have. Primary and secondary does have a forum at primaryandsecondary dot com slash forum. Same with the website. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you give us a like. Make sure you share. I especially appreciate when we get comments. Uh, it's nice to hear feedback from from the viewers. Those comments kind of give us an idea of where we're at. Kind of a kind of a barometer for the direction and and the content. If it's great stuff, we get some great discussion. If uh, people are really hating it, it gives us a clue. So that's, I, that's good. Feedback's always good. So yeah, make sure you like, subscribe. You should probably follow John if you don't already, especially like on Facebook, and YouTube, and you know, all those places. Twitter, so, soon to be Twitter. So I'm going to stop talking now. We'll probably do another one of these next week.
I don't know what the subject will be. It might be again with John. We actually have another one that we're talking about. Just yeah. need to wait for the rest of the panel. So that's all. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>